This is After Hours. My name is James Tolkien. And if you don't watch T.C. Rastani on After Hours, you're a bunch of slackers. Welcome back from that big time commercial break. Recently, I was out in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I had a chance to visit with my mentor, the one and only Mr. Ricky Bittman. So let's take it right now to this exclusive interview with Ricky Bittman. All righty, Ricky Bittman out here in beautiful Sin City, Las Vegas, Nevada. Not really. Where are we? We are outside. First of all, hello, everybody out there in, uh, what is it, podcast land? Podcast land, list radio land, doesn't matter. I they love they can this. listen to it. it is, this, is, this is just like the old days. We are in. Pahrump, Nevada. Pahrump, Nevada? Yeah, not too far from the Las Vegas Strip, not too far from California, right near the desert, and we're in my palatial mobile home right now. This isn't a trailer park. No, this, this is a is mobile not. home. No, things have gotten better, TC. What's the Let difference me... between a trailer park and a mobile home? I'm on 50 Gs. <laughs> <laughs> and we know who's responsible for those 50 Gs. None other than Mr. Johnny Fabulous. His influence has stretched far and wide and has even spilled over to Ricky Bittman himself. I want to thank Mr. Fabulous for getting involved with After Hours because here I am now sitting very pretty out in here Pahrump, Nevada, thanks to him and yourself. The shag rugs, I mean. In the velour Shit. everywhere all over the place. You we live have, in large. We have recessed lighting. I have dimmers. I even bought myself a first sink. A first sink? It didn't work out too well. I had to have it taken out. It was a first sink made of mink. Oh, a more, uh, that's a little tongue twister there. That's a right. first sink made out of mink. And it was a mink sink. Unbelievable. But that idea sunk because it stunk. Right. But <laughs> you want a Nipsey Russell of Pahrump, I'm just, Nevada. I'm just trying to illustrate how things have gotten to the point where if I wanted a first sink, I could get it. You got it. And you got it. And it stunk. That's right. And it's but cool. speaking of the thing that stunk, recently I heard Colonel Bull Montana was out here visiting. Yeah, Bull did come out to see me. It was very nice to see him, as it is nice to see yourself. But Bull is a little surprised to see him out here. Uh, you know, he does have a penchant for buffets. Uh, buffets. Yeah, he that, does indeed. Yeah, it's the only word in French he knows, buffet. Yeah, that's right. And uh, he didn't know who Jimmy Buffett was. But he wanted to see the nearest buffet, so I took him. There's a mall not too far from here. Where I'm going to tell you something right now, TC. Twenty three dollars. Twenty three bucks. Huh? Everything from French toast on a stick to lobster tails. And believe me, he worked it. I am believe. I understand. We're going to that right after this interview. If you want to go there? I'll take you there because I'm telling you. Look at you. Looking slim and trim. I don't know. You don't want to leave there looking like the colonel. No, obviously not. But I understand there was a little altercation. <clears throat> the air's a little thin out here. It, it is. It is. And, uh, you know. A little I, altercation in a hot tub with breakfast cereal? Yeah, you, listen, Bull likes to be warm, and he likes his cereal. And uh, let's just say some of the other residents nearby, they got a glimpse of him. There was, uh, you know. Let's just say Fruit Loops and Lodge, if they've been in liquid for a long they time. They do, yeah, they don't float anymore. No, and it just was, uh, you know, there was coagulants and coagulations of Fruit Loops. I'll have to Apple look that chart. up on my iPhone yeah. later. Everyone out there, look it up now. You don't, it's just just envision it, okay, is all I'm trying to tell you. It wasn't a pretty sight. Cocoa Puffs, tricks. Silly rabbit. <laughs> yeah, it was It was a very ugly sight. At least you didn't use a Total. No, no. Well, then, then you have the the brand uh, problem. Yeah, no. We th don't that want that. No, no, this no, is no, a dozen. You can't no. bury things that. Would that have been deep. like uh, Bill Murray and uh, Caddyshack. Unbelievable. This is, this Pond's is good, good for you. Pond's good for you. <laughs> but I understand that uh, we we've established that Johnny Fab is living large out here. But the reason we're out here is Ricky Bittman's Kung Fu Theater season right. two is now emanating yeah. from Pahrump, Nevada, Pahrump, being, Nevada, being that it's closer to China. Listen. All I can tell you is, again, the influence of Mr. Fabulous has stretched to the point now where season two of Ricky Bittman's Kung Fu Theater is going to be starting up very soon. Season one lasted for three years, and it was only one episode. You tell me any other TV series in the history of television that could enjoy that kind of success. I don't think anybody can. No. Nobody you're, you're, can boast of you're that. You're a trendsetter. It's still on to this day. It's almost like a British sitcom. You know, where the entire series will be 12 episodes. Right. We have three seasons, one episode. One episode. That's beat. how classic it is. All beat. And I'm enjoying every minute of it. We're going to be coming back with a whole new season. Hopefully it lasts more than one episode, but you never know. One episode might be good enough to last for three more seasons. Who knows? Three more years. Hey, it is Nevada. Anything goes. Anything goes. What happens in Nevada stays in Nevada. Yeah, sometimes. Well, except when... when Except when the colonel shows yeah, up. Yeah, then you have a lot of cleanup. But I have a, I have, I'm sitting in this awesome chair. I understand that you got these chairs that we're sitting in. Yep. You got them at the Gold and Silver Pawn Shop the from pawn. your good friend Chumley. I paid a visit to Chumley. Let's just say I'm going to be very candid, as I always am with you, TC. Things weren't going so well with me for a while there. After I, you know, uh, departed after the first season of uh, Kung Fu Theater, I headed out this way. 
a little bit of money trouble before things got up and running, and I had to pawn some of my uh, martial arts valuables, and I got this relationship with Chumley down at Pawn Stars there. Yes. And now, you know, I'm enjoying the fruits of labor. Things are getting better, and I'm enjoying outfitting my house with all the unique collectibles. It, it is. I wish we had a camera in here right now to see this. I mean, it's like walking into, uh, like, the Kowloon. That's right. Oh, my goodness. You could kill a man in a million different ways just with that one wall alone. Uh, look, at the, look at the autographed star you have on the wall over there. That's Who, right. who is that signed by? That is signed by Bruce Lee, not with two E's. This is Bruce Lee with two L's. Really? Two L's? Yes. One of them is silent. And he was a successor to the throne. Didn't want isn't quite as uh, agile as the original master, but nonetheless, it's the na the name is the same. It is. Bruce Lee. A lot of people may think it says Bruce Leg. That's right. Well, if you look quick. If you do look quick and you have cataracts and all like like you know, a lot of people <laughs> I know. But uh I understand now, getting back to the pawn stars, now when they have any kung fu memorabilia coming through the door, you know how Rick on the show says I got a buddy who's an expert? He has a well, lot of buddies. You're the expert. And I'm the kung fu guy from now on. So what's gonna happen is if somebody tries to come in there and sell a bogus set of size or a bogus set of nunchakos or a Rick's fake sign Bruce Lee exactly. star. And I'm the one who's gonna say right away, see this double see this double L? That's not the silent one. That's the one that makes noise. I can just poo-poo the whole deal right on the spot. You are unbelievable. I mean, yeah. do they kick back anything to you? Of course. I'm blossoming out here. Are I'm you? I'm blossoming. Not, not, not that uh, Mayim Bialik blossom from that stupid show about 20 years ago. No, 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 not him. No, no. Who was that? Uh, Bosom Buddies? Yeah, Bosom. Oh, no, no. no uh, blossom. Remember that stupid show? I'm thinking of Punky Brewster. Well, no, if it was Punky Brewster, I'd be going hanging around with him. Remember the old guy, Punky Brewster? Yeah, the guy from Police Academy. Yeah. Well, I can do an imitation of him, right? Let me hear it. Punky. Oh, you're like the rich little of Punky Brewster. <laughs> that always brings the house down. Now, I understand there isn't a neighbor in Miles here, but you do have a famous neighbor. I know you're going to love this because we did talk about it already, but i got to let the people know I live a stone's throw because I threw the stone, and I know this would be a fact, from one other, none other than, does this name ring one for you? Art Bell. Does that name ring a bell to me? Of course it does. Coast to Coast AM's original host, one of the greatest conspiracy theorists and, uh, you know, masters of the macabre nut jobs there are. Can't you just remember being a young man listening to Art Bell in the small hours of the morning with the window open and the summer breeze coming through and that music? I always thought it was Jim Cornette and the other Midnight, the Express, Midnight Express coming, coming down, in. But, but no, Art Bell, you know, I knew I found out there's a face on Mars because of that show. That's right. People there's, don't believe it. That there's actually a face on Mars. There's not only, Google it. Not only that, there are bunkers hidden all over this desert that Art Bell knows about, and he has shared that information with me. Really? Safety bunkers. Why is that? Put it this way, TC. If you're thinking of coming back this way at all. In the next 365 days or less, I want you to make your way out here at least by December 20th. And that's all I'm going to say. All right, let me write that down here. I'll be, uh, by 1220. 1220, you want to be here, not on your way. All right, I'll do that. I'll definitely do that. For okay. those listeners out there, they want to visit any time before 1220. That's right. And this is this theory isn't Mayan. It's somebody else's, if you know right. what I mean. I, I, I understand <laughs> what you're saying there. Rubbing the nose there. That's all I can say. You know, we don't want to stampede out here. Right. Now, speaking of stampedes, I understand that Colonel Bull Montana, along with you and Art Bell, snuck into Area 51? Yeah, and it wasn't quite as successful. I had the whole thing laid out, but what he didn't anticipate was we went the day that I took Bull to the breakfast buffet earlier. Yeah. And, you know, things as they settle through the system of an individual who tends to uh, partake of a buffet, uh, you're going to get the result of uh, things making their way out in many ways, shape, or form. There's heat-seeking radar out there. Right. Okay. Bull toasted a crab cake, you know, for lack Cassius of a better. planetary anomalies yeah, exactly. and beta quadrant, And huh? let's just say that whatever they have for heat-seeking, they saw that right away. We were set upon by MPs immediately. And thank God for you and Mr. Fabulous, because, again, your influence reaches far and wide. We were able to talk our way out of that. But Bull had a lot of explaining to do. Well, he is a colonel. They, they admired the fact that he held the rank. But then you talk about the other rank, <laughs> and it just didn't, you know. Yeah, I know what you're talking about there. You know, it's just Especially with this high altitude and the low atmosphere, it doesn't dissipate as six, quickly as it should. Right. Six and one, 
22 of another, as they say. I don't I have no <laughs> idea. I've actually been in a limousine with the colonel for a long uh, ride. Which brings me to my next story. Okay. Now, uh, you saw the last episode when we won the award again. That's right. Out at the Basketball Hall of Fame. Well, that's where the colonel was, and I had to do a show, and we had a simulcast going on. Okay, that, yeah, that's where he picked up the award. Picked up the award. One of my so, favorite places to visit, the NBA Hall of Fame. Unbelievable. Now, Sabrina was down in Manhattan getting the after party ready for all the after hours Which crew. she does so well. Well, she's the executive producer. Johnny Fabulous, our new agent. Got this long stretch limousine. We were going to go down to pick up the Colonel at the Basketball Hall of Fame and then make our way down to the Big Apple. You know, we, we chose to go by limousine instead of Learjet because we wanted to have our own little roving party on the That's way down. always a good idea. The journey sometimes is better than the destination. Absolutely. Well, we had a little speed bump. Oh, boy. The Colonel, you know him. He gets his uh, little hungry, so we had to pull over to a choke and puke. Oh, dear and, Lord. And uh, we went out and stretched our legs a little bit, and then all of a sudden, a convoy of coppers showed up, and we found out that the colonel was in there woofing down his sandwich, and this homeless vagrant came in out of nowhere who wanted an autograph, and of course, like you know as well as I do, we're not the one out the fans. We sign autographs. We Absolutely. take pictures everywhere we go. But this guy did something across the line. He took... The Colonel's cheeseburger. Oh, Jesus. And one of the three things you don't do, you don't tug on Superman's cape. Don't you don't spit, spit into in the wind, wind. And you do not touch Colonel Bull Montana's Never. food. Ever. Never. Ever, ever, ever. Well, long story short, he gets sent to the clink. We have no money on us, obviously. We never travel with money. Oh, no. So we had to call up Sabrina, who had to tell all of our guests to wait for us. She had to make her way up to Connecticut, bail out the colonel. She was not a happy camper. She must have been livid. Livid is not the word. She's got a temper on her, I'll tell you. She does have a temper on her, and uh, I don't want to... Thank God it wasn't a camera there or a TMZ. That's all I have to say on that. She must have been stamping her cute little high heels. and. We're not going to get into it. We're not going <laughs> to talk about it. We're not going to talk about you that. You must have had some explaining to do, I, Lucy. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of explaining to do. And the Colonel had a lot of explaining well, to do. Well, it's, it's the integrity of the show is compromised, if I you mean, ask me. I mean, the award. The Colonel, I mean, something could have happened to the precious award. That's right. I mean, you don't do these things. But, you know, it's always like you said, you're lucky there was no TMZ, and you're lucky that the place was a dump and full of vagrants, and there was no iPhones. And because a, this is stuff that goes on the Internet immediately. Right, immediately. And we have to thank none other than, guess who, Johnny Fabulous pulling some strings. Boy. And all of a sudden, oh, who's interrupting us here? Who's this, your butler? This is, you know, you, listen, I want my grilled cheese pressed thin. And the skin of the tomato, I want it perforated, so when I bite into it, I don't pull the hot tomato on and it burns my chin again. So if you... Yeah. Thank you. If you could do that, I'd appreciate all it. All right. Well, don't ever interrupt us again there, Jose, all right? It's Irving. Oh, it's Irving? I thought his name yeah. was... They're all named Jose. Yeah. All right. But getting back to this, before we were so rudely interrupted, and I want one, too. Make See? mine. Make mine. My yeah. same thing, all yeah. right? And uh, avocado. Yes. Same to you. Did he just flip you off? Yeah. Listen. No more Carnation Instant Breakfast for you. Right, get out of here. All right. He laughs at everything. Uh, obviously, he's a paid stooge there. What's his name, Irving? Irve. Oh, Irve. Yeah, when we have company, it's Irve. Oh, but when, when there's no company around? It's just Hervey. It's just Hervey. Yeah, yeah. But getting back to this unbelievable Ricky Bittman Kung Fu Theater, making its way, Johnny Fabulous is starting a network for us. Did you know that? I did not know that he was starting a network. He now, is. this is news to me, and he only tells you what you need to know, you know. Right, we're on a need-to-know basis. That's right. And I guess we didn't need to know, but now we know. That's fantastic. And one of the first things he's going to do, other than Ricky Bittman Kung Fu Theater and of After Hours of T-Series Donnie, he wants to have a debate on the show with none other than DeRock. Now, DeRock. This guy, DeRock, thinks he's going to go up against... No, wait a minute. DeRock. DeRock. If you... What DeRock is cooking. The De, DeRock. DeRock. You know, there's a little family squabble there. Johnny Fabulous doesn't like to reveal who he's related that's, to. That's true. That's true. Ooh. This is all, okay, the pieces of the puzzle, it's like one of them uh, magnets on the back of the car for the kids with that disease. If the pieces of the puzzle are all coming together. Right. So right now, listen, if The Rock thinks he's going to go up against and trade verbal bobs with Johnny Fabulous, he must have some kind of a death wish. He's going he's he's to lose. Of course he's going to lose. Hasn't yeah. even started yet and he lost. So uh, that's all, I mean, uh, he's just throwing the challenge out there. I don't know if The Rock is going to accept or not, but I know it's going to take place sometime in March. Coward, I bet he doesn't. 
unbelievable. Hopefully, you'll make your way back to that. That's going to be that monumental. That I will not miss. You will see my shadow cast on the East Coast for that. I promise you, I will not miss that. You, I want to be here to sweep up the pieces. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, it could happen. I want a piece of Duroc when Fabulous is finished. Unbelievable. Now, I know the Learjet is waiting for me here, but I can wait a few more minutes because he's making us a grilled cheese sandwich right oh, now. Oh, it's going to be the best one you ever had. What, what kind of bread is he using? You know, he I, uses I, mountain white bread. Oh, I'm okay. on the wheat. I need the wheat. You know what? I'm going to have him bake you some wheat right now. Oh, really? Let me text the SOB. Oh, you, he knows how to read a text? He'll know how to read this one. Is it in Spanish? It's in all caps and in Spanish. Oh, you're yelling at him yeah. in a Hola, text. Hola, Hervé. Pronto. You know what that means in Spanish? No. Just do it. Just do it, huh? It'll Unbelievable. Do. Now, Ricky, uh, um, I heard you're going out on the road again with Cubby Smackums. Cubby Smackums collectible shows. I have not forgotten where I came from. I never turned my back on. The originator of my fame and wealth was Cubby Smackum, so I'll be turned. we got to stop. I am going to make one more stop. The Concrete Oregon, maybe my last stop in concrete. You know, you can't go from Pahrump to concrete and uh, expect to live to tell about it. So I think this is going to be the last time they see me in that area, so come out. Impress us. Who is going to be at the table with you? At that day, we are going to have none other than. Do you remember the guy who played Jaws in uh, uh, James Bond? Oh, Keel. Yeah, his sister. Oh, his sister. His gonna sister's going to be there because she was the inventor of the little. Uh, you know those nesting dolls that you put little tiny wooden things, one doll inside of another. Oh yes, like the Russian thing. Yeah, she did one of him oh, in really? all his movie roles. Like you got Jaws. From James Bond, and then you get the the alien that was serving man in uh, Twilight Zone. So she did that. I remember him. He was driving around with Jackie Chan and Cannonball Run That's too. That's right. And I think there's one of him in there. So Jackie you got, Chan or him from no, Cannonball no, Run? No, no, all all Keel. These are all Richard oh, okay. Keel nesting dolls. Can, can you do me a favor? My birthday's coming up. You think you can get him to sign one? Of, of those course money? I can. Well, I can't get him to sign it because they don't speak. But I can get his sister to sign it. What's her name? I think it's Tess. Tess Tess Keel. Tess Keel. Yeah. Well, she sounds like a sounds like a she's, hot dish. Yeah, she's she's a big woman, but oh, you really? know, yeah, she's nice. Does so she, she have the metal teeth too? No, she ha- her teeth are actually wood. They're wooden. Yeah. And they're not she's, related to Washington. No, she's they? just a big fan of George Washington, so she had them made made out of wood. Really? What kind of wood? Just wood. Yeah, you don't know like birch I oak. Think, you know what? Balsa. I think, now that I think about it, she did kiss me on the cheek one time. I think it might be cedar. You got a splinter in there, huh? I did, actually, yeah. When, but you know, it's fact that I heard. It's good because you can pick your teeth with your teeth when you're done. You know, eating. you know, you should patent that and then go down to the pawn shop. <laughs> I think Unbelievable. I, might. Oh, I see you getting a text here. I guess the grilled cheese is ready, Ricky. It is ready. It is ready, and it's hot. Well, we're going to wrap up this interview. This is fascinating. I hope I'm going to get Aww. you on the radio show once again when, when I get back to the studio. Any topic you wish to discuss, you let me know. Yeah, we, we don't even have to be in the same room. Maybe we can get an Aunt Bell. Oh, boy, wouldn't that be something? Let's end the show with the Midnight Express. Okay. Ready? Do, 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 do. No, 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 This is Leah Thompson, and you're watching After Hours with T.C. Rossani. <laughs> That's the power of...